going to do is we're going to go through the slides from uh, Singer, and we're going to work out whatever he says we're going to do. And so in this first triangle, we have sine, we want to find the sine, cosine, and the tangent. And we want to start off with just a fraction and find out what the decimal equivalent of that is. And it says that we have AC is one side with 13 inches. That's got to be the hypotenuse. So let's call this AC. We're going to call that 13. And we're going to say that um, the side opposite, I believe, is 12AB. No. ABC, AB is 5. And so, I'm sorry, AB is 12. So. Okay, and AB, wait a minute, AC, oh, AB. Correctly yet, have I? Okay. Okay, if this is AB is 12, okay, BC is 5. Okay, we finally got it correct. So let's look at that, and we're going to see that the sine of theta is O hell. And we can see that the side opposite is 5, and the hypotenuse is 13. So 5 divided by 13 is what? Simple fractional problem, right? 0.3 Point three eight four six, and that is the sine of this angle, right? Okay. Now let's look at another one. Let's look at the cosine. Cosine of theta is equal to oh hell another hour, and adjacent is twelve, and the hypotenuse is still thirteen. 12 divided by 13 gives us one more number. Okay, for 0 0.9230. And then we want the tangent. Is O hell another hour of agony? And the opposite is 5, and the adjacent is 12. Is that correct? So if we just divide 5 by 12, we'll find that 0 0.4166. Thank you. And that's exactly correct. So we found the sine, the cosine, and the tangent, right? Very simple stuff. It's a fraction. Not tough at all, right? If you remember that this is simple stuff, it's just <coughs> fractions. It's easy, okay? So we found the sine, cosine, and tangent. All we used was fractions. Okay. And they kind of tell us, yes, we found the sine is 0.417. And actually, they they laid it out differently, obviously, because they got a different... Oh, that's the tangent. Oh, I see. The sine is 0.384. We agree with that. The cosine is 0.923. We agree with that. And... The tangent is 0.417. I agree with that. Okay, that's lucky. Okay. Using the table of trigonomic functions. We're not going to use the table of trigonomic functions. Are you kidding? We're in the modern technology. We're going to use our TI-30X2S. Find the value of tangent of 30. We're not going to use the tangent for that table. We're going to pull out a handy-dandy calculator. We're going to put in, hit clear twice, hit tangent, Put in 30, hit enter. Done. What do we get? 0.5774. Amazing, I tell you. Here's functional magic. Okay, so find the angle when the function is given. Find the angle A if cosine is A is 0.7314. Now, we'll, we're not going to look up in some chart. Hit clear twice now. Hit second function, cosine. 0.7314 enter. 
43 degrees. Amazing, I tell you. All right. Now, follow down the column. No, we're not going to follow down the column. We're going to use our TI the X2X. Find the angle when the function is not in the table. Uh, we don't really care about that. Our table is infinite because we're using the TI for the X2X. Okay. The number 0.5120 is not in the table. We don't care about that. Let's go to the next example or quiz. Find the sine, cosine, and tangent of angle A in the right angle triangle ABC with angle B 90 degrees. Oh, I like it better when they tell us which angle is which. And so we have 90 is angle B. So this is angle B. And angle A, what did it tell us? Find the sine, cosine, tangent of angle A. We're going to call this angle A. And we have, um, yeah, rather they call it not the angle, but the sides. So side AC, well, I guess this is C up here, <coughs> is 13 inches. BC, is 5 and 12. Didn't we just do that a minute ago? Mm -hmm. That's that same problem, isn't it? Okay, well, you know, they're just not paying attention, I guess. Yep, those are the same angles, aren't they? Oh, we find the angle. I'm sorry. Okay, it's going to, well, let's see, no? I think we went one slide too many. Maybe a couple slides too many. In the table. No, that's not the one. Okay. Okay, with that one. Let's see. Maybe it's 12. Find the value of the sine of 55. Okay, let's do that. Hit clear twice and just hit sine 55 in it. It says 0.8192, right? Okay. Find the value of the tangent of 37. Hit clear twice. And hit tan 37, enter. 0.7526, is that right? Or are they off a little bit? Did they round? They round a shame on them. Well, that's why they're not using a good calculator. <laughs> okay, find the angle A of cosine. A is 0 0.4540. This is good practice. We're going to hit clear twice. We want to find the angle that has the cosine of 0 0.4540. So we hit second function cosine, 0 0.4540, enter, and we find an angle. What is it? 62.99 degrees. 62.999 is a rounded shame on them. It's okay, we can live with that. And it's rounded to 63 degrees. That's okay. But for accurate measurements, that wouldn't do, would it? We want to use the long number whenever we can. Find angle B. If the tangent of B is 6.3138. Okay, hit clear twice. Second function tangent, 6.3138. You'll notice they used four point accuracy, even though it's a whole number and four point. 81 degrees, exactly. Okay, zero, 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 that means zero. Okay, find angle A. If tangent of A is 0 0.9004, hit clear. Now hit second function tangent 0 0.9004. 41.99 degrees, I like that. I like 41.99 better than 42. So if you're given a triangle ABC, angle C is 10, BC is 4, and angle C 90 degrees. Okay, let's see if I can draw this in correctly. I doubt it. Angle C is a 90. And uh, so I think we're calling this A, side A. B is up here and C is down here, I think. And AC is 10, and BC is 4, and find angle A and angle B. So what function do we have? If we have the side opposite and the side adjacent, what function is that? Tangent. 
Nice. Candid. So, so, oh hell, another hour. Oh, agony. Why do we need to say that? To make sure we put the right one on top, right? O is opposite. So, 4 over 10 is the tangent. Okay, we're going to find the angle, right? Second function tangent. Take clear one first. Second function tangent. 4 divided by 10. Enter. 21.801 degrees. And so if we subtract that from 90 degrees, wait a minute, how will we able to find that? Let's take our calculator here at 90 minus second function answer, and it's going to tell us the other angle. Because these two angles have to add up to 90 degrees, right? What's the angle? Switch here to what? I heard that a lot. Okay. Name the size of calf values using angle A as the reference angle. Um, name the size of calf values using angle A as the reference angle. Okay, let's do that. And we have Side opposite is 4. Side adjacent is 10. Did we just do that? That's the same angle, right? Angle A, O over A is 0.4. So, second function tangent 0.4, enter. Say again. Second function, second function tangent, twenty-one point four. Very nice. Okay, degrees, right? And from that we could find out everything else, because then we could take the sine of the cosine to find the hypotenuse, right? Either way we could do it. Okay. Uh, find the number in the tangent table closest to point four. No, we're not going to do that. Um, <coughs> given a right triangle ABC, and AB is fifteen. Angle C A. Okay. We think that they always do it like this. A. B, C, right? No, angle C, no? This time. <laughs> okay. B, C, and A, A, B is 15, and angle A is 30. Really, that's all we need right there, right? Find... That's all it gives us. Good. Okay. So we know the angle is 30 degrees. So we know three things, right? We know the sine of 30. We know the cosine of 30. We know the tangent of 30, right? Let's plug those in. What is the sine of 30 degrees? Okay, hit clear and hit cosine 30. Eight six six what? Zero two five. Zero two five. We're just gonna leave it eight six six zero for the moment. Now hit clear again and hit tangent 30. Point five seven seven three. Now, that's equal to O hell. This is equal to another hour. And it's equal to O agony. So we have 0.5 is equal to O hell. So if we want to find, we have the hypotenuse, right? Which is unusual. In other problems, we don't. So we're looking for, let's say we're going to look for the opposite first. Okay? 
So we would take the sun because it has something we are looking for and something we have, right? Okay, so 0.5 is equal to mo, which is what we're looking for, over 15. What is this 15 doing? It's setting the scale, the size of the triangle, right? We've got an angle. The sine of that angle is 0.5. That's good for any angle, 30 degrees, right? But this 15 is scaling our triangle. Okay, so we're going to multiply both sides by 15, and we're going to get 15 times 0.5 is equal to O, right? Everybody agree with that? Is 0.5 times 15 7.5? And that's uh, op equal to the opposite. So this over here is 7.5, whatever units we're using, inches, centimeters, whatever it might be. Okay, now let's find, we just used the sine, right? Let's use the cosine. Why would we want to use the cosine? Because the cosine is A over H. And we have H, and we are looking for A, So let's say that 0 0.8660 0 is equal to A over H. And we know that that is um, A over 15. So we multiply both sides by 15. 15 over here is going to drop out, and we'll be left with 15 times 0 0.8660 is equal to the side A. So let's get the exact long number, and we're going to get, um, let's just say cosine 30, hit clear and hit cosine 30. So we get our nice long number in there, cosine 30. Now, just push times 15. And you get 12.99. Some people would round that to 13, probably. Okay. Yeah. For the next slide, I guess it's going to get a bad for that one. Solution. Yeah, we knew that. And we found. Let's see. We found that. Yep, we found that. We found this. Oh, this is a new one. Given a right triangle ABC, angle A is 15 degrees. Shall we do this? Why not? So let's say we have a triangle again. And it says uh, angle A is 15 degrees. And again, since we have the angle, that gives us three pieces of information, right? So, we have a side. Select the side to be found, okay? Let's see, uh, angle C, we're going to call this C over here. So we're going to call this B. And AC is 200 feet, AC. So that's the side adjacent, right? So we have the side adjacent. Everybody agree with that? Okay. Find the side BC. Find the side opposite. That's what it's saying. Everybody agree with that? Okay. So if we're looking for the opposite, let me write the four, three formulas again. Sine of O hell. Cosine. Another hour. Is of agony. Now, oh, it just got to be a, this became a very silent recording. Okay. I think that's in the right one. 
Okay. If the rest of the recording is silent, don't be surprised. Okay, I plugged in the audio jack. That's a good thing. All right. So, as I said, we have the three functions. So we have three pieces of information because we know it's 15 degrees. So now we want to pick the one that has something we have and something we are looking for. We're looking for the side opposite. Okay. We're looking for the side opposite. And we have the side adjacent. So the tangent of 15, turn on your calculator, hit clear twice, hit tangent 15, enter, and we get a number. Whoops. It's what? Two six seven nine. Two six seven nine. Okay. Why does it do that? All right. Two seven six nine. And so two seven six nine. Two seven six nine. Oh, I'm, I have mentioned that I'm dyslexic, right? Two six seven nine. Do I have it right over there? No, I don't have it right over there either. Okay, let's fix this one too. Two six seven nine. Okay, now if that is the tangent, and it is, that's equal to oh hell another of agony, right? Okay, so. That's equal to, which one do we know? We know the side adjacent, right? Let's, let's just take that one out because we're running out of space. And it's 200. Everybody agree with that? So if we just now multiply both sides by 200, this 200 will drop out and we'll have 200 times 0.2679 is equal to the side opposite, right? Now, what do we have in our calculator? 2.2679, right? And that long number. So just times 200, enter, and we have... Say again. 3.5. Okay. Now, probably if we go to the ne next slide, it's going to tell us that. Yes, BC is 253.58. Amazing, I tell you. Okay. Uh, example 14.3, relationship among the impedance. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. Now they're talking AC. Can I tell you now? Okay, I'm going to tell you now. Okay, we always have... Three sides and what I call the resistance triangle. Side squares over here. And Z is the impedance. It's always the hypotenuse. Resistance is always down here. Always on the bottom. Always, always, always. And this is X sub L. They're about to tell you an X sub L. Inductive reactance. I bet, look at that. Resistance. Capacitive reactants. Oh, they've been bad. They're going to give us an X sub C. They shouldn't. They really shouldn't do that because now this triangle is flipped over and this is going down here. X sub C is below the line. But we're not going to get into that. We're just going to leave it up here. And we're going to change this symbol right here. And we're going to change that symbol right there. We're going to say it's X sub C, and that's really jumping way ahead. And we really shouldn't do that. But since they're making us do it, and we know that we have a 20 degree, and I'm going to give you that name now. We have a 20 degree phase angle. That means that's the efficiency. Somebody take the cosine of 20 degrees. What's the cosine of 20 degrees? 0.93. The cosine of the phase angle is called the power factor. Tell me that angle again. I mean that 0.93. That means this circuit is going to turn 93% of the 
of the incoming apparent power into true power. But that's the power triangle. That, and that's a whole different Oprah. So we're not going to do that right now, but I want you to realize that this real important stuff, this is the things we're going to do in the future. So what we have here is we don't know resistance is AC. We don't care about that. Uh, we have 1,000 ohms of X sub C. Okay. And it says 20 degrees. It says find everything else out, right? So all we have is the angle and we have the side opposite, right? Okay, let's write our functions. I can do that without unplugging myself. Sine, oh hell, cosine, another hour. Whoops. <laughs> oh, that'll never work. Okay. Another hour tangent. of agony. Now let's look at Okay, let's look at what we have here. We have all we have is a side opposite, right? So we can only use the sine or the tangent. Right? Everybody agree with that? So let's use the cosine. I mean the sine because we have the side opposite and we have the hypotenuse, and we'd kind of like to know the hypotenuse, right? Okay, so let's plug that in. Cosine 20, enter. Take clear twice first now. Not cosine, I'm sorry, sine. Hit clear, hit clear. Now hit sine 20, enter. Okay. So 34, 0.3420 is the opposite over the hypotenuse, right? And we have the opposite. It is 1,000 over the hypotenuse, right? Everybody agree with that? Now we have to do the Hiroyuchita slip and slide. We're going to exchange these two numbers. And we're going to have 1,000 divided by 0.3420 is equal to H. So what number do we have in our calculator right now? 0 0.3420, right? Okay, don't change anything. This is where this calculator saves you a step. Put in 1,000, just punch in 1,000. Now divide by second function, answer, enter, you're done. And what do we get? 29 what? Thank you. Twenty-nine twenty-three. is that right? So our impedance, the total resistance to AC flow, but we'll get that definition next semester, not now. The total resistance to AC flow is 2,923 ohms. Now what is the real, now let's say this is a motor. What is the resistance of the wires in the windings of the motor, the pure DC resistance? Well, the only way we can find that out is with the cosine. So let's hit clear now, which is something we don't usually do with this calculator, but because we usually just go trucking off and do some more stuff, right? But this one time, we're going to hit cosine, 20 degrees, enter, and we get a number. What is that number? 9396. And as I said, this is the power factor. The cosine of the phase angle is the power factor. So this is a 93.96% efficient circuit. So this number down here is 93% of this number. Let me show you how that works. Okay. A over H is equal to 0.9396, right? Okay. Which one of those do we know, A or H? We know H, don't we? Okay, let's take out H. Oops. Wait a minute. 
Uh, 20... Nine, twenty-three, right? Okay, is equal to that. Now it's a over that is equal to point nine three nine six, right? So if we multiply twenty-nine twenty-three by both sides, we'll get multiply twenty-nine twenty-three over here, and everything but a will be dropped out on the left side. And we'll be left with A is equal to 0 0.9396 times 2923. As I said, if we multiply the hypotenuse times the power factor, we'll get the true power. So 90, 0.9396 times 2923 is what? 6. Say again? Okay, so this circuit is taking 2,923 VAs of incoming power and turning it into 2,746 watts of actual work being done. That's why it's called the power factor. It's that efficient. It's 93 point whatever percent efficient. Okay, and you know what? On that note, we're going to stop.